Okay, uh, Ray, can you introduce yourself to us? And a lot of people are not familiar sure. with uh, the California controller. There's sure. many people focus on the governorship, yeah. gubernatorial race, and also um, mayor, city mayor race. Yeah. race. How important it is. Yeah. And um, please tell it to our Sure. Um, so I'm just going to look at you right now. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, so I'm Lon He Chen. I grew up in Roland Heights, which you probably have some viewers and readers who are... You did? You really? Okay. I used to live there, too. So I, I grew up in Roland Heights and uh, spent my childhood here in Southern California. Uh, I went to Harvard University and got four degrees from Harvard, including a law degree and a PhD in political science. Uh, what I've other degrees? Uh, a bachelor's degree in government and then a master's wow. degree in political Impressive. science. Yeah, so... Uh, I did that and then I worked in national politics. I was appointed by George W. Bush to work on health care policy. Uh, I also actually was appointed for a few years by Barack Obama to work on Social Security Advisory Board, which is the board that oversees Social Security policy here in the U.S. And then several years ago, after working for both Marco Rubio and Mitt Romney on their presidential campaigns, my wife and I, uh, my wife is actually half Korean, she uh, and I moved back here to Southern California, excuse me, to Northern California. Our families are still here in Southern California, so we live up in the Bay Area now. Mm -hmm. But for the last nine years, I've been a fellow at the Hoover Institution yeah. and uh, teaching at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. And I've been focusing largely on financial policy, fiscal policy issues, and how they affect people here in California and the U.S. Um, I'm also a small business owner. I started a business that's focused on policy advising work, and I also am the chairman of a healthcare system mm -hmm. in Northern California. The controller's office is the chief financial officer of the state of California. But the most important thing about the controller is it's supposed to give us transparency into how the state is spending money. Many of us pay a lot of tax dollars to the state of California, but we never know where the money is actually being spent. So the controller, when the job is being done well, is supposed to give us transparency into how the state is spending money, how effective that spending is. You also have the power as controller to audit every single state agency as well as local agencies that are spending state money. So it's a tremendously important job that doesn't get paid a lot of attention uh, and has the opportunity, I think, to give people some real sense of how their tax dollars are being spent. And are they doing a good job currently? I don't think so. You know, I think we don't have great transparency. You know, California is the only state where they don't give us like a checkbook, line item by line item, where we spend our money. Every other state, they have this kind of visibility wow. into how our state is spending money. But in California, we don't have it. Mm -hmm. uh, I always joke around, you know, even in Illinois, where their former governors are in prison, yes. they have transparency we don't have here in California. Oh, yeah. So we need more transparency, in my view, in order for California to work better. It's why people don't trust state government anymore. They send their money to Sacramento, and they have no idea where it goes. So I think we need to be doing a much better job. And California is the only state among all 50 states? Only state that doesn't have checkbook level checkbook transparency. Level. And nobody called for it. Nobody, so nobody is held accountable for it. Okay. You know? And, and even Betty Yee and all that. Yeah, kind of I mean, look, she has John Chang, right? Yeah, they, neither of them, I think, were aggressive enough in, you know, both of them did some good things, but neither of them were aggressive enough in trying to move forward mm -hmm. in terms of really trying to tell us how is our money being spent. Uh -huh. And then we've had a lot of scandals in California. You know, we've had this unemployment insurance EDD scandal, which some of you may have heard about, $20 billion in taxpayer money uh -huh. that was fraudulently paid in benefits during the pandemic to fraudsters in Russia and China and people in state prison got all this benefit money. And the state was paying this money without trying to figure out who was eligible and who was not. So it, it's really a problem because there's no accountability. So do you think California claiming that they are you know, surplus in budget for like how many years? Do you think that might be in question as well? I just wonder where all the money's being spent. If we have this big surplus, it's not coming back. There's no yeah, tax no, cuts. No. It's not coming back to no, us. No. So where's all the money being spent? That's, all, that's my only the question. Gas price, the gas well, the, look at how high gas prices are. The reason why gas prices are so much higher here in California is because of all the taxes. We pay a dollar fifty almost in taxes on each gallon of gas. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So were you a lifelong uh, Republican? You're I have the, been. You're the sole uh, Republican ca candidate. I'm the only Republican right. candidate in this race. There are four Democratic candidates. I'm the only Republican candidate. I've been a Republican since I was 18 years old. Uh -huh. 
you know, I believe that the Republican Party can stand for opportunity and responsibility and freedom and, and can stand on the side of small businesses, stand on the side of, of merit in education. These are all important values that I think I hope people understand that's what it means to be a Republican, in my view. And you're fiscally conservative. Right? Fiscally conservative. So that means I think we need more responsibility mm -hmm. around how our state is spending money. But you hear a lot of Democratic candidates who claim that they are, you know, socially liberal, or, you know, and then say they are fiscally conservative. Do well, they mean really the same meaning as what when Republicans say we are fiscally conservative? You know, here's my problem with that. They talk a big game. They say they're fiscally conservative, but then they go and they spend money on all these things, and they don't want people to understand where the money is being spent. So they can say they're for fiscal conservatism, but if you look at their records and you look at what they actually do, they're always for spending more money. Spending more money, giving more benefits, and having no accountability. I want to help people, but if you look at homelessness in LA, $800,000 per homeless unit of housing. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. There's no, again, there's no accountability. Yeah. No accountability. Yeah. Um, so can a controller influence the governor of, the, you know, of shaping up their policy, their fiscal policy? The controller is completely independent of the governor. So the controller can actually say, listen, governor, why are you spending money on all these different things? Show us what the money is being spent on. So you can use public influence to basically tell the governor, you got to spend smarter. That's one of my whole themes is we need to spend smarter. We need people to understand where's all this money going? Why are you doing it? And then you can use your platform to argue the governor's not effective. He's not being effective at doing the things he's supposed to be doing. Homelessness is just one example. Okay, Think about high-speed rail is another example. That's ridiculous too. Tens of billions of dollars. This program is already budget. massively over budget. There's no train. No. Where's the train? They're not even building anything right now. They're right? building a small section between two cities in the Central Valley. It's not coming to L.A. No. It's not going to San Francisco. Do you think we should scrap it? Okay. Uh, I, I think we need to take a good hard look at, at uh, replacing it with something that might work better or just doing a different kind of program in this state. It's a lot of money we're spending. I'm worried about how we're spending all this money, but we don't seem to be achieving any results when it comes to this rail. And, and we already have very good infrastructure in the state. We need to make that infrastructure better. Why are we building a whole new thing that's already over budget and late? How about the climate change agenda? Does that also uh, bring a lot of tax burden to uh, the taxpayers here in California? There's no question that we are paying more for some things because we have a very aggressive climate agenda. Now, I personally believe that there are some things we should be doing to address climate change. I think it's an important thing that we do have policy to look at it, but we have to balance that, okay? One example is they want to get rid of all gas cars in the next couple years. Right, right. Yeah. Is it 2023? It, it, well, no, I think it's a little further than that. I think it's 2035 that they want to get rid of all. But my point is, who's that going to hurt the most? Middle class. Middle class and working class. People who live in and around Koreatown, they're the ones who are going to be hurt the most because of the challenges created by this really extreme policy. So you can be for a clean environment and clean climate, but we need balance. We need to say, how are we doing this while at the same time encouraging the economy? And that's not how policy is made in Sacramento right now. It's so extreme. How come the uh, California Democratic Party, I'm saying this because they have, they have control of two-thirds on the both sides and of the chain. every and single government. statewide elected official is a Democrat, exactly. every single one. Why, how come they don't think about the trade-offs? About when, this climate change issue, I think that's, one of the reasons why Russia could attack, in my view, yeah. uh, Ukraine, because we imported a lot of chunk of the oil from Russia yeah. ever since Biden went into office. Yeah. He cut off a uh, Keystone Pipeline, not just that, he cut, I think he... Natural gas, natural gas, domestic exploration, no new energy, areas, right? no new leases, no new yeah. Leases, and um, it's damaging the middle class. You know, I used to pay $21 back last year when I fill up my Prius car. You probably I mean, paid 40 or $50 now. Now, now, now it's close to 60 Wow. Wow. That was close to 60. You know, they don't, they don't care. I don't know if it's that they don't care. I think it's because nobody ever holds them accountable. They just do whatever they want, okay? And because we don't have any Republicans in statewide office, because we don't have any balance in our state legislature, there's never anybody to say, hey, doesn't it make sense for you to have policy that's a little bit more balanced? Doesn't it, shouldn't you look at the impact on working families 
Look at the schools. That's another example. We spend so much money on our schools. But our schools are some of the worst in the country. Worst, yeah. Isn't it 49th out of 50? It's 40, 49th and in some rankings last. So my only point is you're hurting the kids who need to be helped the most. The schools that are the worst are the ones in neighborhoods that can least afford to be hurt. But the problem is, again, we keep spending more money, but nobody's telling us, hey, how are you actually spending that money? How is that helping our education system? We just don't know anymore. So you'll bring it down to like checkbook level. Like checkbook other level, things, your transparency. Budget, I want people to be able to go on their phone and, and download an app, yeah. and then they can see how are we spending our money? You in want to know? Time almost, I'm curious. Right? You know, definitely in real time. You know, certainly in the last month. Figure out how much are we spending on coffee? How much are we spending on anything? You yeah. just type it in and we look it up. It. Yeah. We need that kind of transparency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you doing in the fundraising front right now? When did you declare your campaign? I declared in July of last year. Last year. So we we're doing very well. We have raised over two million dollars wow. already for this race. That's a lot. And we have support from many. Uh, Korean Americans, we have support from Chinese Americans, we have support from Caucasians, we have broad support in terms of our fundraising, but we need to raise more because mm-hmm. this is going to be an expensive race. California is a very big state, and the only way I communicate is by raising resources so I yeah, can purchase advertising. How many candidates so far? Seven? Uh, well, there's one Green Party, yeah. four Democrats, mm-hmm. and I'm the only Republican. Uh-huh. So there's, uh, I guess, six candidates in all. What are, who are the prominent ones that you were kind of looking at? Probably you make the top two. In your you know, all the Democrats are of the same profile. They are locally known candidates. So okay. there's a candidate, couple candidates in Southern California, a couple in Northern California. Uh, I don't know who's going to come out of the primary. The Democrats will have to decide. No that, prominent I guess. I, 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 their, their name was not. Yeah, you know, no one, that, no one that anybody would be okay. deeply familiar with. So that that works to my uh-huh. advantage because I'm a newcomer as well. I'm an outsider. I've never run for office before. But I'm trying to bring change to the system, so I think that being an outsider is helpful. Anybody raised more money than you did? No, at this point, I think we are You're leading. Number, we're oh, leading on the fundraising. Oh, you are. Right wow, now. that's a good. That, yeah. So, you also rely upon that the pe- pendulum is finally swinging on the other side. You know, California is a far left state. Look, you can see by the legislature. Look at George Gascon being the LA County yeah. Sheriff. Um, uh, DA. Yeah, DA yeah. and. Just all the cr- craziness that's going on in this state, and you see a lot of Democrats. I see a lot of Democrats telling me they're know, sick of it. They're sick of it. They're sick of Biden. You know, yeah. they're sick of all the all this craziness, and yeah. that's why I think Caruso is rising up. I think he's actually conservative, in my view. Yeah. Um, do you think the pendulum is swinging enough so that it's help, it will help your campaign? I, I Even think so. Even though this controller's seat is not as shiny yes. as like the governor uh, election. I, I think so, and here's why: because if you look at the statistics of Biden's approval rating. It's down 30% yeah, since he was elected. Mm-hmm. Even Newsom is down 15 to 20% since the recall. The recall. So and the he, recall is kind of an anomaly. Yeah, it's an anomaly. Because they spent $100 million, you know, you had all these yeah. famous national figures coming. Exactly. In, and you, you, you could print, print from home. Did, right. Didn't I tell you that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so my point is the reality of where we are as a state is people are frustrated. They want change. You saw the LA Times poll that said 64% yeah. of Californians think their taxes are too high, yeah. right? I'm so writing we, an know, article about it, we know all of these things are going on. The, there's a lot of things you can't control in politics. And one of the things you can't control is the environment, the national environment, and the state environment. And both environments are very favorable for change. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of message I have is we need to change things. We need to make things better. So does the controller's office also uh, pay attention to the homelessness issue? Is yes. Because it directly affects the tax revenue? Yes. yes. C- can you tell, uh, I- explain it to our viewers and viewers? So when we spend money on homelessness, there's a combination of local money plus state money. You know, the state has allocated tens of billions of dollars to homelessness over the last two years. Do you think it's gotten better or worse? It's gotten worse. It's so what the controller's office can do is come in and audit every program that we spend money on and say, where's the money gone? How effective has the money been spent on homelessness? And how do we improve the situation so that we can spend money smarter to solve the problem? Because right now we're not solving it. Let's just be honest. We're not, we have all these programs to construct housing, programs for addiction anything. recovery. It's not solving anything. And so what I worry about is you can keep spending money all you so want. So that was like a waste of money. 800000 is that Triple H? Per, triple H. That's per triple unit. H, right? Per, per unit. unit. You could have taken that money. Because some people have been telling me it's 500000 tri- It varies. It varies. But, but 800, one program within Triple H yeah. was $800,000. Yeah. Yeah. 
ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's, that's like more expensive than a you know just a regular house. Here. Well, you could move somebody to a different state. And buy them a house exactly, exactly. and give them a checking account, and you'd still be better off than spending eight hundred thousand. Is it because of the union people? I think it's a variety of different things. It's the cost of construction is much higher much for higher, these units, yeah. but also regulations and like all of the things that go on. Too. I'm sure that's part of it. But also in the city, you know, they oftentimes do this thing where they don't even have competitive bidding for contracts, so they just give it to whoever's a campaign contributor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's corruption. And unfortunately, that happens in too many cases. Yeah. So what made you finally, you know, I mean, people in the, you know, inside yeah. baseball of politics, they know you, yeah. right? But what made you finally decide to run for office this time? Well, I, you know, as I said, I grew up in California. And when we moved back to California nine years ago, the California I came back to was completely different. It was a place where there was much less opportunity. I can't tell you how many neighbors we've had who've moved away. Because they can't afford to live here anymore. Left here too. Businesses are leaving, jobs are leaving. I just think we can do better as a state, and I believe that with my background and experience in politics, in policy making, and in business coming together, I think that's the right background for this kind of office. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good time mm-hmm. for me to get in and try and make a difference. Because the only way we make a difference is if we run and we show people that we can be effective as Asian Americans. As people who believe in fiscal responsibility, those are things that I care about, and I I think it's a good time for me. Which, which state were you at before you came back in Massachusetts? Massachusetts. I lived in Massachusetts because I, I went to Harvard, and then I also worked for Romney in Massachusetts as well when he was running for president. So I was living in Massachusetts, and then came back. I also lived in D.C. for a couple of years too, but I have spent the last nine years here in California. And then, of course, my childhood was here too. How about the crime issue? You know, crime has been spiking up. Does yes. that all, how does that affect our, you know, the taxpayers? Well, you know, one of the things I wonder about is, uh, are the police and law enforcement getting the money they need? What I worry about is, you know, I talked to a sheriff the other day, not in LA County, but a different county, and he was telling me that there's some money the state promised him that he never got. And so the controller can go in and audit and say, where did that money actually go? I believe we need to fully fund the police. Me too. Uh, I am concerned about people who think we need to defund the police. One of my Democrat opponents is pro-defund the police. And, And, you know, a lot of people in the Democratic Party may like that message. I don't personally like that message. I think the police need to be supported. I think we need to do everything we can. So as controller... One of the things I can do is to make sure law enforcement is getting the money they've been promised. Okay. And because right now I'm not sure they are. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about uh, your relationship with the Korean American community if you have one? Yeah, well, as I as I mentioned, you know, my wife is half Korean, yeah. uh, and so my uh, mother-in-law is Korean. My mother-in-law is Korean, and I um, have enjoyed spending a lot more time half in Chinese. around Korea. She's down. half Chinese, half. Korean. My wife is half Chinese, half okay. Korean. Yeah. So her father's Chinese and, and her mother's. Taiwanese or uh, no, my my, my mother uh, my uh, uh, my father in law is several generations oh, okay. in the U S. So Chinese American for several generations, and then my mother in law is is Korean. She came from Korea in the in the nineteen sixties, um, and so uh, yeah, I mean I've had many occasions to spend time here in Koreatown uh, since. Uh, we got married, and I have a lot of support in the Korean American community. I have Michelle Steele and Young Kim are both they supporting my. Campaign. They've endorsed my campaign, and they're supporting me. And we want to spend more time with the Korean American community because the Korean American community is really the economic center of LA in so many ways. If you look at all the economic activity here in Koreatown, so many businesses that have been created, so much opportunity that's been created here in the US, in California, in LA, because of the Korean American community. It's a very important community for me to speak to Mm -hmm. and to participate in events with. Mm -hmm. Can you list uh, some of your major endorsements other than uh, the ones that you just mentioned? We we have endorsements from national leaders like uh, Marco Rubio and Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan and Rob Portman, Tom Cotton, you know, major US senators and political figures. Here in California, we have the support of former Governor Pete Wilson. We have Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader, soon to be probably Speaker of the House. We have basically all of the Republicans in the state legislators, state legislature. But we also have dozens of, of local elected officials, Republicans, Democrats, and independents across LA and across California. We just announced the support of a, a key group here in LA County 
uh, and that includes former elected officials as well as current LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger. She's a supporter of mine as well. She's so a Republican, we, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think her office is nonpartisan oh, yeah, yeah, technically, yeah. Uh, but uh, but we have support from many many different people across LA and across California. And you know, uh, I think I, I texted you about this. Um, our f- cover story today was about Jay Chen, the Democratic uh, mm. congressional candidate who's mm. running against Michelle Steele Park. You know, co- co- criticizing that she needs an interpreter for. You know, yeah, I saw those comments. I, I, I saw those yeah. comments. I, I, I wonder why he would say that. Uh, it's, it's a strange thing to say. Michelle Steele is an American success story, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. She's a wonderful person who has done great things for her district. She's a leader in Congress. I'm proud to have her support. Uh, and I believe she's going to continue as the congresswoman for that, for that, I guess it's a new district. I believe she's going to be the congresswoman for that district. But let me say this. We all share an immigrant background. And I think people who are immigrants to this country, in some ways, we shouldn't be spending our time attacking each other. We should be trying to build each other up, particularly in the Asian American community. So I'm, uh, I heard the comments and I was confused by them. Mm-hmm. Can you also talk about, um, you know, the situation between China and Taiwan? Yes. I don't, you know, I yes. Know it's a concern. Uh, especially with Russia attacking um, Ukraine. Ukraine, you know, many people. Yeah. The next stop would be probably China, you know, yeah. against uh, Taiwan. And some of the generals that I talked with, talked to, they pretty much said it's going to happen one day. And um, are you worried about it? Is you know, it um, we should be. We should all be worried about it. Can you talk about? As it? you know, um, you probably you may not know, my family's from Taiwan. Yeah, uh, many generations on Taiwan before they came to the U.S. I'm very worried about it. I'm very worried about the influence of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, and what they're doing to attack Taiwan, uh, not obviously through military means now, but they're attacking Taiwan in many different ways. They've attacked Taiwanese democracy. Um, And I think it's important to stand by Taiwan. I think the U.S.-Taiwan relationship is very, very important. Uh, I don't know what China's going to do, but I do believe they have an interest in attacking Taiwan someday. And I think uh, it's very unfortunate because Taiwan is an example of democracy and freedom in the entire Asia Pacific region. So I uh, I have deep concerns about the future of Taiwan. But I think America's going to stand up for them too, right? Because the semiconductor, the Taiwan semiconductor, the supply chain issues about, are huge. Yeah, we America we are relies huge. probably ninety percent of it. Yeah. On, on the other hand, though, we we have to ask. Uh, are we really doing enough to stand up for Ukraine right now? Are we really doing enough to stand by these democracies? I worry about some of the weak leadership out of Washington right now. You know, and, and, and Biden, for example, he didn't even call what Russia was doing a genocide until a couple days ago. He didn't want to call it that for so long. Why not? Stand up. Have some backbone. Show people that America can lead again. Mm-hmm. Um, can you... Uh Mention your campaign address yes. uh, and campaign um, website yes. and how people can uh, help out your campaign yes. and you know contact uh, uh, members. And the all, the, know, the best yeah. place to go is my website, which is chenforcalifornia.com, C-H-E-N-F-O-R, California.com. Uh, we also have an introductory video on YouTube. We have a video about me. It's translated into Korean, amongst other mm-hmm. languages, okay. so I hope people will go and take a look at it. And we have the, um, on the website, more information about my background, about what I plan to do. And if people are interested in supporting the campaign, whether contributing financially or just lending their endorsement, I hope they'll go to the website and sign up and they'll get our updates. When, uh, when does uh, Vote by Mail start? Vote by Mail starts May the 9th. May the 9th. And the election is June 7th, so and then the general election is in November. So it's actually less than a month away. Less right? than a month away. Ballots are coming out, so watch for those ballots. And, uh, and, and yeah, we'll be voting very soon. Okay, any last words you want to say? To no, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the Korean American community here in Los Angeles and beyond. I'd ask you for your support and your help. I hope we can bring transparency and accountability to state government again. And I hope you will consider supporting me, Lan Hee Chen, for state control. Thank you. Thank you, Lan